Okay, so let's look at the tank setup. Now I'm going to glance over here where my screen is. Okay, so we have four 55 gallon fish tanks. In each tank we have three koi and one goldfish. Now, why three koi and one goldfish? Koi, it turns out, are our best uh, model for common carp. They are essentially common carp, aren't they? Okay, and they have very well developed sensory systems for amino acids. And you know, those are our primary subjects. Okay, but the big thing is if the goldfish also switch on and goldfish have less in the way of uh, amino acid receptors, you know, you're really hitting it on the head right there. So, you know, we look for the koi mostly, but if the goldfish join in, it's a home run. Okay, now let's look at the tank in some more detail. We have, of course, <laughs> a lot of filters, all right? And because we have to remove all the amino acids after every trial. And we also wait literally a week between trials in any tank, so the amino acids are out of the tank. As you can see, we have a pair of large volume canister filters. You know, they're the kind of the most powerful filters you can get pretty much. They have a large internal volume of carbon granules, okay, to remove amino acids. We also have the standard back filter, as you see with any aquarium, which also has carbon in it. And then most importantly, and this is kind of new, we actually have an under gravel filter. Under gravel filters are super important because amino acid solutions are denser than water. They will settle into the gravel and less clean thoroughly they'll, you know, come out in subsequent experiments and really mess things up. So the incorporation of an under gravel filter is super important. We let that run, you know, for a week just to get sure, make sure everything's out of the gravel. Okay, so that's the setup. Let's look at some experiments. So we're about to add the first smallest concentration of stimulant into the tank. We add simply pouring, we pour the solution in front of an impeller, which makes the solution spread throughout the whole tank. Okay, so we'll see that, and then we'll see the fish's behavior to that addition. Now, in order to understand the fish's behavior, you've really got to understand concentration gradients, okay? So if we look at the screen, we see that when an amino acid is placed or amino acid solution is put in front of the impeller, because of the density, it will sink straight away, okay? So you get a larger concentration right underneath the impeller. And then it will also get blown a little bit and circulate around the tank, okay? What this does, this creates in front of the glass a kind of a a flat area where we have two kind of concentrations that are locally high at the end and kind of a spread between them. And if you watch the fish's behavior, they literally follow this trail. They don't really go anywhere else in the tank. They follow the concentration gradient. And this is the key finding of this work. Okay, so fish, and it makes total sense, right? So the fish will detect amino acids and then follow them until they get more and more and more concentrated. If you think about this, it makes absolute sense in the wild because a food source will be emitting, you know, amino acids, all right? And the further the fish is away from the food source, the less amino acids they are. So they basically turn into that stream and follow the amino acid strength to the food source, all right? And that's exactly what we see in our results. And when they find the most concentrated source of amino acids, they go into feeding mode. So we'll see a searching mode, then a feeding mode, okay? And it's concentration dependent. Okay, so we saw the fish definitely follow those concentration gradients and they ended up literally in the strongest concentrated area of amino acid sitting on the bottom. Now remember that solution is dense, so it sinks into the gravel, okay? Now the experimental procedure is interesting because we then 
get increasingly higher and higher concentration doses. So do 10 times as much, 100 times as much in terms of strength, and then even a 1,000 times stronger. All right. So we'll actually see, because we're actually increasing the ambient concentration, we'll see this effect repeat over and over. But interestingly, between trials, between trials, we'll actually see the fish apparently turn off. That's because the amino acids have spread through the whole tank. Remember that impeller's moving the whole time. And when they can't locate a source of strong amino acids, they're just stimulated generally. All right. And they whiz around the tank looking for food. All right. This is interesting because as you can see from the the video, there's actually um, a recording. We do 10 minutes before every test, a blank without amino acids in the tank. And the fish simply, you know, when there's no amino acids in the tank, they're very lethargic and just float around kind of aimlessly. But when there's amino acids in the tank, same concentrations throughout, they're searching all over, which is interesting. So we see this continual kind of ramp and then smooth and then ramp and then smooth as the concentration steps higher and higher. Now, of course, the reason you're watching this is because you want to see how tank tests correlate to situations in the field. I'd fully advise you to take a look at our two field studies, which I'll link here. But in a nutshell, we see the same kind of immediate bite response in the field as we do in the tank, right when aminos are introduced. Okay, so you can kind of in your head visualize the two things happening together. But why imagine it when I can show you? Okay, so let's watch this next video. And this is quite a common occurrence when I'm doing field trials and others too. We'll put in a sample of amino acid and bang, we'll get a, a take right away, okay? And if you watch our videos, you can see that sometimes we have to have to wait maybe 20 minutes between takes when we're, when, when we're not using amino acid dosed baits, which is interesting. Nope. Immediate bite right off the pot. Here's the remaining footage for the first trial. I'll speed it up until we get to the next edition. Okay, so that was the first trial, okay, and I gave you the whole 10 minutes there, okay? And that's what we do. So we kind of dose a known concentration of stimulant, we watch for 10 minutes, and then we up it by a factor of 10, so the next dose will be 10 times stronger, watch again for 10 minutes, and just repeat, okay? So we'll see that over the next few trials, okay, all the way up to a thousand times stronger. Okay, so that's kind of interesting what happens. Now, most, most, most importantly, okay, I'll kind of re-emphasize this at the end. We don't see a degradation or a reduction in feeding response. Okay, now this is a very, very important finding because we've seen with single amino acids, there's an oversaturation effect with the so-called zombie fish. It's like drinking 50 cups of coffee, you just turn off, right? Okay, so at super high concentrations for amino acids, the fish generally 
turn off and actually move away from the area. But as we'll see, all the way up through a thousand times concentration, the fish remain active in the same way they were in the first trial. Okay, and this is a super important finding for the impulse product because it remains, you know, active over an extremely broad concentration window. You simply can't overdo it with impulse. Okay. So when we look at that last trial, 600 milliliters is nearly three bottles of stuff. Right? And you can have the same effect with 0.6 of a milliliter. So obviously, you know, it's uh, super cost effective if you just, you know, just follow the instructions. So uh, what I'll do, I'll um, forward through to the appropriate parts, recap at the end, and if you want to see the undoctored in the footage, it's also up at up at the uh, Carp Geek TV site as well. So you can watch the whole, uh, you know, 50 minutes or so of complete trials. So you can see there's no creative editing, right? <laughs> so let's take a look. Here is the 60 milliliter dose. That's uh, 100 times stronger than the first dose. Let's see what happens.
And finally, the 600 milliliter dose. This is an insane amount of amino acid. You'll never get this in, in the field, okay? And, th and this, if this was a single amino acid, it would completely turn the fish off. But as we can see, although they are slightly elevated in their kind of searching behavior, and you've got to remember there's a huge background concentration of amino acid at this point, right? Okay, we then, you know, increase that local concentration around the drop and drift area as illustrated in the first slide a while ago now, right? And we see that same response we saw right at the beginning. So we see that consistent high concentration search and finding of, of the, you know, the amino acids and then the, the starting of feeding. Okay, excellent result. See you guys next time.